if you talk to older people, their biggest concern is that they lose, you know, their cognitive function. And um, for us, it's it's super exciting the possibility that we can read out molecular function in a way from the brain in a living person, right? These molecules, they come from the brain. These proteins, they come from the brain. So can they tell us very early how the brain functions and how it becomes potentially susceptible to Parkinson's disease, to Alzheimer's disease? So can you estimate or talk a bit about the uh, accelerated brain aging and uh, how it is defined and also what is the effect of extreme brain ager on uh, cognition? Yeah, so what we, what we were able to show is that um, the brain is actually most, the, the, the highest number of um, organ-specific proteins in, in the blood. And maybe this is because it's so highly specialized. Um, in the brain, there's a lot of um, cell types or, or processes that are very unique to, to the brain. And they're, they're not, um, uh, you, these proteins are not used in any other part of the body. So we get, you know, it's great that we get a lot of insight, biological insight into the brain. Uh, what we find with these proteins is that they too, they predict as they change with age, they predict the relative age of the brain. And so again, people with older brains, they tend to show um, cognitive decline more likely over five years in our study than those who have younger brains. And we also find that patients with Alzheimer's disease have older brains than healthy controls. Um, and that has actually been shown with other methods by other researchers in the past. So uh, it's interesting that we can confirm that simply by looking at proteins in the blood. And for us, this is, you know, as we mentioned earlier, my main interest is brain aging and, and uh, neurodegeneration. And why does the brain become susceptible to, you know, cognitive dysfunction um, in almost anybody, if they live long enough, I mean, there are a few centenarians who seem to still be cognitively intact, but it's very rare. First of all, very few people live to a hundred and uh, of those who live to a hundred, a very small number really still has, you know, cognition intact. And I think if you talk to older people, their biggest concern is that they lose, you know, their cognitive function. And um, for us, it's, it's super exciting, the possibility that we can read out molecular function in a way from the brain in a living person, right? These molecules, they come from the brain. These proteins, they come from the brain. So can they tell us very early how the brain functions and how it becomes potentially susceptible to Parkinson's disease, to Alzheimer's disease, or some of these other um, uh, types of, of uh, brain impairment. Uh, frontotemporal dementia is another one. As you said, these are giving you a printout of an active, alive brain. Is it most research? You know, we can't do unfortunately until someone passes away, and then you can research the physical brain. That's right. Yeah. You mentioned earlier of you know some of these proteins kind of tracking with someone before they have a diagnosis of dementia, but you know maybe they start to have some memory problems. Is there anything like that that someone could use to identify if they themselves are an accelerated brain ager? Yeah, so that's the idea of um, of using this technology basically and and validating it in you know more individuals and then develop uh, a test that you know you could you could um administer or have administered and probably with insight from a physician to help you interpret the data although some findings could probably be um given to an individual directly um but i think 
the information is most useful. I mean, it's not useful to you if you know that your brain is two years old or so what are you going to do? You would really like to have the advice of an expert of telling you, for example, people who did this, you know, they had a younger brain on average, people who did that, or people who used this supplement, um, showed, you know, an improvement after five months of treatment or, or something like that. Right. So as we collect more and more information and, and then also have information on interventions that people do, or even if you take a drug, you know, if you, if we measure somebody's brain age today, and then they, um, get one of these new antibody drug treatments, and we would um, measure their brain age in half a year or in a year again, and it shows, oh, this brain age is now younger. Then you have a bit more confidence that, you know, what, first of all, what we measure is probably true, but also that this drug is probably doing something. And so I think as we collect more and more information, we will be able to not just use the measurements that we make to, to make these predictions, but then also have useful interventions where we have hardcore data to support that, yes, this is reducing now your risk of getting a heart attack or getting cognitive decline. <laughs>